Hey everyone, this is Austin Schur here with We Write About Music, and today I am speaking with Stuart Irving, and I'm thrilled to have back on again Richard Von Kalmar of The Badly Behaved. They've just released a brand new song called Who Am I, and I'm super excited to talk to them all about it. Guys, I want to thank you so much for being here today. How are you both doing? What's going on? Ah, it's a pleasure, sir. Um, well, in, in Johannesburg at the moment, it's very, very chilly. Um, the sun's gone down, which it does go down very quickly here anyway. It's, uh, it's one of those things where it just sort of, it's there and then suddenly gone. Um, but we're in our middle of our winter now, so sure. that's why it's cold. You wouldn't think being in Africa that it would be cold. <laughs> I mean, you're pretty far down there, so, you know, you're right at, right yeah. at the tip, so I yeah. don't, I completely understand. And uh, I also have to say, mm. of, the, of the hundreds, hundreds of interviews I've done, this is the first global situation I've ever had in my hands. We've got three continents represented at the same time, which is just wild. So I'm in Los Angeles. Cool. Richard, you're in Berlin, <laughs> and you're in, and you're just right at the bottom of Africa, which is truly like mind blowing for me that we, we can all talk seamlessly at the same time. Um, yeah. And it just shows how connected we yeah, are. That's great. You know? Yeah, it's it's honestly amazing. Um, and Richard, how are you? I don't want to cut you off. No, no, no. That's that, that that that's absolutely fine. Um, so cool, though. Yeah, busy working away. I mean, uh, this new version of um, "Who Am I" has just been released. It was released on Friday. So, uh, all, well, both of you, Austin and Stuart, you probably know when when a new when a new track is released, it's um, it's quite an intense quite an intense period. Just um, yeah. um, you know, a lot of promotional activity. Um, before I go any further, um, I, I probably should say, um, although Stuart's in, in Johannesburg, you probably noticed that his his accent isn't typically South African. It's a, a Scottish accent. So, sure, sure. Uh, so, so it's it's probably yeah, makes that's it definite. Even more, <laughs> even more even more countries represented in that, in that way. Um, very cool. Well, obviously the song is amazing. I've been pretty much listening to it nonstop since you sent it over, and it's another great track from you um but the actual title has a lot to be said and interpreted about it it's very introspective who am i i don't know richard why don't you tell me what is the song all about what inspired it and uh yeah i want to hear all about it i'd, I'd be in interested interested to hear steward's um uh, sort of interpretation because i don't think we've really discussed it but oh perfect the... <laughs> so it'll it'll be steward's chance but yeah um uh, it, it was really written um, with uh, sort of a, uh, not necessarily aging, but a sort of a rock a rock star uh, or, or movie star, movie actor or actress in mind, who um, sort of reach a point where they start questioning themselves, uh, questioning their self worth as well, and and their identity. So the song is a lot about um, actually identity issues and. It, 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 you know, although although I had um, the sort of rock star in mind, and, and not necessarily an aging rock star, could could could, could be a rock star in his or her twenties too. Uh, I mean, they they would have they would have the same sort of um, um, existential questions. And uh, what I was going to say is, it does actually appeal to all of us. I mean, we 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 all face with these sort of um, these sort of questions, um, and uh, and and we all face with. Yeah, I guess existential, um, existential questioning. You know, who who am I? Um, why am I here? Um, um, what do I contribute to society? Um, um, and and then of course self image. And and the song's also about, I guess, you know, his or her career. So one of the lines in the chorus is, um, uh, uh, "Have I? Oh, sorry, also I need to think about it." Um, Am I right on trend, or has my career reached the end? Um, so, so, so there's, there's that, there's that too. So, Stuart, what's what, what is your interpretation? I mean, you, you, you sang the song. <laughs> you know, it's funny. It, it's funny you coming up with that line because that was a, a line that really hit home to me. About it, it's kind of like we always question where we are in time with our lives, and. Uh, I mean, the, the music industry can be incredibly shallow and uh, you sometimes question your self-worth. And, and that's what struck me with this, this particular song 
Um, much the same as what, uh, I mean, I don't know how many times do you go into the bathroom, look in the mirror and say, hmm, that can't be right. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, you, you, sort of, you sort of like, yeah, it, it, it's, I mean, I'm, I'm probably falling into the, I was, I was like laughing there a wee bit under my breath there because, I mean, I'm 71 now. So I've been in the industry a long, long time professionally, something like 52 years. Wow. And, um, and I'm still doing it. And I think it, I sometimes, you know, you catch, catch yourself on questioning, you know, like you say in the song, who am I? Um, but you do have to kick that one into touch because if you let it get into your into your sort of psyche, you can start yeah. to sort of doubt yourself. Um, and I don't do that, um, I must admit. So, but from the, like, like an artist's point of view, I was able to sort of like dip in and take that persona on and then, but get out of that because yeah. that isn't who I am. I'm not that kind of, kind of person, do you know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? I, I completely understand. It's almost like a performance. It's, yeah. It is. It's well, Again, it's very heavy, and it makes you think. And if you think too long about it, bad things mm -hmm. can happen. And it's just like you have to take it with a grain of salt and sort of move forward in a way. I completely get it. Um, yeah. But I think it's relatable for so many people out there, no matter your age. Like, we all go through these steps in our lives, and you're always questioning, you know, certain parts of it yeah sort, sort of timeless yeah no absolutely and and as with the whole album you know uh, yeah you know i mean i might be jumping the gun a wee bit here but richard was really cool in in sort of like he he gave you a basic framework and said you know put your own stuff into it, your own input yeah and and I lived with this, a lot of the songs, like lyric-wise, particularly because that's where I'm going to get the hook in, sure. you know. And um, and because I was able to do that, I was able to relate to so much of it, um, which was really cool, you know. Of course. Uh, I, I remember Stuart, um, you saying to me uh, while we were recording it, um, th there's a line uh, that goes, um, "Have I ble have I been blessed?" It's a second. It's a second verse. It started the second verse. Have hmm. I been blessed with luck? Or am I about to self-destruct? And I remember you saying to me, I, I, "I really like that. That really, that really rings rings a bell." I can't remember exactly what you said, but uh, yeah, that is a great line. But there's a lot of that stuff in that song. There's a lot of things like that in the song. There's those little glimpses mm -hmm. of fragility that you can get. You sort of, oh my god, I, I, I'm I really lucky, or is I'm just I'm is it all just going to gone? Yeah, it's a very serious concern. Um, obviously, <laughs> obviously, the distance between you is is huge, um, but you've been collaborating nonstop. I'd love to take sort of like a peek behind the curtain of how this all came together um, and just really like get into the specifics of recording this song and this record. How did it all work? Mm. Um, well, how we met, how we met, um, you're right, I, I went to, you know, I live in Berlin, I wrote, I wrote the whole album here in Berlin, um, what I did as part of the songwriting process is I, I sang, I sang the songs, not very well, but I, but I sang them, and then as, you know, as um, Stuart alluded to, when we got into the studio, I said, you know, I've, I've sung this, listen to what I've done, but don't do what I what I've done, you know, yeah. do what you need to do. Um, uh, sing the way that you that, that that feels right to you. Sing the way that you would sing this. Um, how we met, though, is through a mutual acquaintance, acquaintance or actually friend um, who who does a lot of sort of television and 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 ad work. And I um, um I, I was looking for a, you know for a very good singer. Um, and I think my brief to him was I really want somebody who's experienced and um, uh, is, is going to get this and, and we're not going to spend hours and hours and hours um, recording and recording sure. again, again and again and, and, and trying to trying to work out how to how, how best to um, um, articulate um, 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 the words and he said, yeah, well, I know, I know Stuart Irving, who he was the lead, Stuart was the lead singer um, in a very successful South African band called Ballyhoo, 
uh, they had a hit with um, a, a song called Man on the Moon. And he said, would you be interested in, in working with, um, with Stuart? And, you know, I, I said, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, of course. And, and, and um, as Stuart said, he's 71 now. He was a little bit younger when he recorded the album, but, um, uh, you know, we met and, uh, you know, I think, I think, you know, the chemistry was there. We, 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 we hit it off straight, straight away. Um, Stuart, I don't know. I don't know what your thoughts are. No, definitely. I mean, um, I mean, like Richard said, the mutual friend of ours, they had the studio. Um, and, uh, it was, it was very instant. Uh, you know, if, if I find a project, <laughs> my gra my gag threshold is very low when I, <laughs> when it when it comes to working on something that I can't I, if I don't believe in it I'll, I'll just not do it anymore yeah. you know the time was when I was doing session work uh years ago I mean I, I could do like four or five different sessions and four or five different songs from different writers in studios here and um, and I'd go, oh my God, okay, I'm doing it for the money, you know. I'd put like a ten rand note on on the on the, the music stand and say, that's why I'm doing that, mm -hmm. you know. But with Richard, it was a totally different thing. I I really I felt a connection with him. We we liked each other. Other we we hit it off as as guys, you know. We were sort of like I don't know, it's kind of similar backgrounds in a way. Um, uh, we, we, you know, we, we just kind of, yeah, there was a gel that just a connection and I, and I got into, I could get into what he was trying to say with these songs and more than anything as an artist and as a performer, that's what you're looking for. Um, and I've, I mean, this, this is like, I mean, how would you describe it, Richard? It's, it is dance. It's a di very different to what I normally do. Yeah, yeah, no, um, Austin, um, <clears throat> Stuart has a, um, I don't know, a, a sort of a, a, a rock band. I mean, is, is that how you would describe the music that you, I mean, it's got guitars and drums yeah. and bass. Um, yeah. Whereas this, yeah, I, I, I would actually, synth, synth pop is the um, the genre that I've, I've sort of, sort of settled on. And actually, Austin, when, when we, we've had a discussion about this um, um, before as well, I mean, genres. And I think yeah. you asked me previously, what, what genre? I mean, where, where, where do you, how would you, how would you categorize this music? And no, I, I mean, I, response... yeah, I think synth pop is very accurate. The thing is, though, is like in today's music scape where everything is a little bit of everything, it's so difficult to be like, this is this and this is that. This particular song, yeah, definitely has synth pop elements, perfectly dancey. Um, you could call it a lot of different things, to be honest. It sort of casts a wide net. Uh, and I and I also think that when you add lyrics to something, especially like a dance type track, it can sort of transcend and change a little bit. Um, yeah, this this one feels a little bit of everything here, but compared yeah. to. Stu, compared to you, you know, primarily making rock music, this must feel like a bit of a left turn, <laughs> right? I mean, I assume so. It, I'm, it sure, I'm sure you've like, yeah, you know, no, it is. Yeah, you're totally right. It's it's like, you know, I mean, I thought, would I? No, I, I would never have considered that I would have done dance music. But you know, yeah. the funny thing is that I learned a lesson many years ago because I came through the '70s period in the UK, and. Um, my first signing was with EMI, um, with the band. Mm -hmm. um, so that was my f the first album I ever did was, I think we recorded it in 75. And then the punk thing broke out. Sure. And I was so anti the punk thing. Okay. Because we were what they would, would, would have called the, the dinosaur band, you know? This <laughs> uh, old, boring old farts. And, and, and there yeah. I am, I'm only 24, and mm -hmm. I'm a boring old fart already. And um, and it and it's really strange, you know. But what I learned from that was to embrace all genres of music. Yeah. And if if you if you can jump make that jump over and not stay where, you, then you can stay relevant. And that was one of the things that interested me. It piqued my interest. What 
Richard was doing. And I thought, I'm going to have a go at this. I think this, this could be cool. Yeah. And I feel like you're, I'm glad it yeah, did. you're at this point where you can pick and choose your projects. You know what I mean? And it never hurts mm. to experiment. Um, I do want to talk a little bit more about like the impending record. Obviously the song is great, but as far as the record goes, are we going to see more experimentation in the sound? Is it going to be similar in vain to this song? Like, I don't want to push you too much to say too much, but I would like to know a little bit. You mean about future releases, Austin? Is that what you... Yeah, future releases. Um, yeah, along those lines. The, uh, the, next, the next two songs that the Badly Behaviors recorded, un un unfortunately... Um, well, I was, was going to say, unfortunately, I'm, I'm, I'm the singer. Well, I'm one of the singers. Oh, that's not Me. unfortunate. Come on now. Well, it's just unfortunate in the sense that, um, that, Stuart, that Stuart's no longer um, um, the singer. We're involved in the next two. But, sure. of course, I'd like to work with Stuart as well um, and continue working with Stuart in the future. But interestingly, um, the backing vocals on this song um, are performed by... Um, 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 a, a lady called uh, Calais from Diaz, oh. or from Diaz and, um, and she sings the next two she, she has a, sort of a bigger role I mean I'd say that her and I sort of sh almost share the lead the lead singer type of um, type of um, um, spot in fact the next the next one the next release which is uh, probably due to be released in around September is um, a cover of an old uh, Bobby Orlando, who was an American, American producer, yeah. um, song called "She Has a Way," and it's 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 man and woman that sing the song. So I sing the verses, but it, the singing isn't the singing of the verses isn't very demanding. Um, if it were, I, I'm, I'm sure I would have asked Stuart to to help me, um, but um, I managed to sing the sing the verses, and she sings the choruses, which which is which is far more demanding, and, and she she does a great job. But anyway, that's you know that's for the future. No, no, it's perfect. Um, in terms of actually creating the original songs, though, do you find that when you're making them, or at least writing the lyrics, like you have a specific voice in your mind? Obviously, like when it comes to that, you know your capabilities, and I feel like maybe it could have an impact on the way you're writing for who's going to sing it? You're absolutely right. I mean, with uh, not not just this song, um, but a lot of songs off the album that Stuart um, um, was the lead vocalist on, um, the the chord changes um, um, and, and, and even the melody lines um, are quite... Are, 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 are great. Um, so yeah. it, she has a way. She has a way. For example, you know where I sing a verse. It's um, uh, um, just trying to think what it is. It's uh, C C for most of the way, and then it, it drops down sort of um, a semitone, and then there's a bit at the end where it goes up to B, and and sure. and then Calais starts singing. It goes up to E and D, but all of that I can handle quite well. But um, I, I don't know if you remember this, Stuart, but uh, the if you take slightly famous, for example, it goes slightly mm. uh, only slightly famous, uh, and it's uh, the chords go sort of from I think you know C C to G uh, or D to G, and then um, C to F, uh, if, I, if I remember correctly, and that takes somebody with um, you know I think a, a fairly good vocal range and 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 a fairly competent singer uh, to do that. I could never do it myself. And then the other thing that I do a lot of is is key changes. Uh, so very often pop songs are written you know in in a single key and yeah. and the changes. Um, I I would use three or four different keys in a song. Um, and there's there's one song, um, Solar City. Um, I don't know if you remember. It, Stuart, but I do. It, it, do. the, uh, it's, you know, I, in my opinion, a great song. The, I deliberately wrote the verse in a minor key, and then the chorus goes into a major key, and it just provides this really interesting sort of juxtaposition.